This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. If you sign up using the link in the description, you'll also get access to Nebula, a new streaming platform that I am a part of. But more on that at the end. A revenant is one who returns from the dead. At first glance it's a fitting title for a film about the true story of Hugh Glass, the man who, after being mauled by a bear and left behind by his companions, defied death and made his way back to civilization in search for revenge. But in the context of Iñárritu's magical realism, a filmmaking style that blends our factual reality with elements from the otherworldly realms of magic, dreams and the departed. I think it's a story that asks us to engage it metaphorically, rather than literally. As such, the story of Hugh Glass is not just a gritty tale about survival, or at least, not one about survival of the body. Instead, it's an odyssey of the soul. A spiritual tribulation in a realm just beyond ours. One that we embark on from the very outset. I ain't afraid to die anymore. I've done it already. Assuming this more symbolical interpretation, the frozen wilderness we enter becomes a manifestation of what can best be described as America's Purgatory, a world that reflects what is lost, that is inhabited by the spirits of the dead. It's a land where untamed nature stretches to the edges of the horizon, where the bison that were nearly hunted to extinction roam freely and plenty and where the natives struggle to honor the ways of this kingdom while being either exterminated or assimilated by white foreigners. Men who find themselves as unwanted invaders in a new world that answers their careless intrusion with ruthless hostility. And a new world it is. Unlike the Christian world they came from, this realm is governed by different gods, and different laws. There's no place for Christianity here, and its temples are reduced to ruins. The newcomers, however, have no intention to submit themselves to any laws except their own, and with neither party respecting the other, a violent clash was inevitable. The colonists see a place that, despite being filled with riches and unlimited potential, seems to insist on remaining savage and uncivilized. I'm waiting for Captain Leavenworth to arrive with his army. Mm. And then we'll have enough men to go back out there, shoot some civilization into those fucking wreck around and get back our pelts. The New World sees men like Toussaint, which, probably not coincidentally, is French for all saints enter its realm to exploit, corrupt, and rape. It sees men seeking to destroy all that is sacred and become their own gods. All to be God, you. God give it. God take it away. At the midst of this conflict, there is Hugh Glass. Having married a native woman with whom he had a son, it seemed he left his old world behind him for the new one. A point that is further emphasized when he was forced to choose between the two. Is it true you killed an officer? I just killed a man who was trying to kill my son. But after tragedy struck, Glass was once again back with his original people working for a company that embodies the very thing he sought to escape. And so, being trapped between the two worlds, the fate of his soul undecided, he is put to the test. In order to succeed, he must face the demons of his old world, and of his old self, 
guided by the light of his wife, he must uncover the laws that govern this realm and submit himself to them. Only then can his soul pass on, on to his loved ones who are already waiting for him on the other side. One of the first things that becomes apparent is that the god or life force in this realm is contained in and shared by the beings that dwell within it. At one point Fitzgerald talks about his father, a materialistic non-believer who suddenly found religion in a moment of desperation. And it turns out the god, he's a squirrel. I found God, he used to say. While sitting and basking in the glory and the sublimity of mercy, I shot and ate that son of a bitch. There's a recurring pattern of spirit animals, of men killing other living beings and absorbing their qualities. When we meet Fitzgerald, his only concern is his pelts, which he stows away on the rocks as treasures to be collected later. Make sure to mark this place. We're leaving a fortune under these rocks. In this sense, he, like his father, shows commonalities with the squirrel, constantly occupied with hoarding and hiding its means for survival. What life you talking about? I ain't got no life. I just got living. The only way I get to do that is through these pelts. As for Glass, the film opens with him hunting a deer. And after having killed it, he exhibits its traits of trying to remain inconspicuous while being highly aware of the dangers lurking around it. <laughs> However, when he kills a grizzly bear, Glass transforms. Similarly to how the bear charged Glass to protect her cubs. Glass too finds himself filled with unrelenting strength and aggressive determination. Covered in her height, he goes on the offensive, charging towards danger instead of hiding from it. Now, isolated and alone in the frozen wild, with the rift between him and his old company becoming wider, there is another revelation. This land doesn't just inflict cruelty, it also nourishes. Its powers can be healing as much as they can be destructive. But this is only revealed to those who see and honor its inherent value. He do it. He da hudoku. Twice Glass experiences moments of rebirth. The first time he is aided by a native, someone already familiar with the ways of the land. The second time he is on his own, proving he has cemented his connection to, and more importantly, his gratitude for the life force surrounding him. We see the frost melting away and for the first time this once bleak and cruel world is imbued with a sense of tranquility and warmth. There is however one final challenge that must be faced. So far Glass had been driven by a desire for vengeance against Fitzgerald the man who killed his son and left him for dead. He's afraid. He knows how far I came for him. But as one of the natives alluded to earlier, Fitzgerald's fate is not for Glass to decide. The Guitu. Revenge is a form of grandiosity a symbol of the belief that we can decide over the cosmic balance of our universe, that we can direct the fates of our own lives and that of others, that we can essentially act as gods. 
Here, this deeply ingrained sense of entitlement is a token of the old world, of the white intruders believing they can reign over the natural world, become lords of a higher force's creation. Realizing that in order to truly submit himself, he must let go of his quest for vengeance. He must become part of the land, not a master of it. And so, when the fated moment comes, Glass lets Fitzgerald go. And the final judgment that follows, executed here by native warriors functioning as some kind of shepherds of natural justice, Fitzgerald is condemned for his crimes, and above all, for not honoring the land and only seeing the ways in which he could exploit it. Glass, however, has proven himself worthy, and his soul is finally allowed to move on, finally ready to rejoin his wife, who appears one last time, smiling, ready to guide him. Our journey then ends as Glass breaks the fourth wall by peering outside of the frame, as if being freed from the purgatory contained within it, and ascends to the great beyond. The screen fades to black, but the sound of Glass's breath remains, emphasizing once more that this story wasn't about survival of the body, but about survival of the soul, lingering here as the rhythmic movement of life force fading away into music. By elevating this historical tale of survival into the realm of myth and metaphor, The Revenant becomes a larger reflection of our relation to the natural world, and of the troubling effects of our exploitation of it. The film's production too was affected by this as the crew ultimately had to travel all the way to southern Argentina just to find snow. But for more on that, I highly recommend you check out Curiosity Stream, the streaming service with thousands of documentaries on, among many other things, climate change, nature, and our relation to it. With unlimited access starting at a low price of just $2.99 a month, this already is a great resource for both education and entertainment. But if you go to curiositystream.com slash like stories of old and use the promo code like stories of old, you will not only get the first 31 days of Curiosity Stream for free, but you will also get unlimited access to Nebula, the brand new collaborative project between me and many other creators that places creativity at the very center and where your support means you're directly supporting us. You can follow all your favorite creators, watch our videos ad-free, and even see some exclusive Nebula originals. So again, if you sign up now, our streaming service Nebula will be included in your Curiosity Stream subscription. So be sure to check out curiositystream.com slash like stories of old. Use the promo code like stories of old, and start enjoying the countless hours of content today.